Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this fine November Sunday. As we gather together, we remember that in the beginning the Creator shaped this land. Hills were sculpted, river valleys dug deep, life sprang out of the soil, and then people came. We honor and thank those who were here before us, the beaver, the Cree, the Métis, and then those who came from across the sea made agreements to share the land, and now we live together as treaty partners. As we move into our time of worship, I would draw your attention to the announcements which are included in the bulletin, and... Scott's doing our announcements today. First off, there is a new newsletter available in print out in the Narthex and on the website if you prefer to access it there. A lot of these announcements and events and things from past announcements and events are in that newsletter. The Salvation Army annual Christmas kettle drive is happening. It will be in stores on November 13th, and they are looking for people to volunteer to ring bells and do all the things involved in those kettles. If you want to volunteer, please let Carla know by Monday, and she will schedule time slots for you and everything. There are two sound baths coming up, one this next Tuesday, November 10th, and then two weeks from then, if that doesn't work for you, they're on the 24th. Uh, you come here at 6.45, between 6.45 and 7, and the sound bath starts at 7 in the large basement. And because of all the various restrictions, you do have to bring all your own blankets, pillows, mats, whatever will make you comfortable to lie there and listen to the wonderful sound. On Saturday the 14th, there may be a family carnival for, from the Grand Prairie Pride Society at the Bose Event Center. That might have changed now with increasing restrictions on size of gatherings, but at the moment it is scheduled for 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturday the 14th. Once all the new sound equipment gets here and gets installed, there will be a need for people to operate it. And if you'd like to volunteer and get trained on how to do that, please talk to Gord or Carla and they will arrange everything for you so that we have people to run it once it's finally in place. And finally, I would be remiss if I did not tell you about the Time and Talent auction, which you can find in the newsletter. And there is still time. If you have a talent that you want to offer that you haven't yet, you can contact Allison and get it put in for bidding. There's, what, over 40, 50 things now? Wow, 65 things up for bid starting not this coming Monday but next Monday November 16th the link to get in on the auction has been posted several times in the St. Paul's Facebook group and it is in the newsletter as well um, you just have to register for an account so that you know, it knows who you are and where to email you if you win something and then you can go through and check out all the wonderful items that are already there. There's everything from soup to pies to carols on demand to motorcycle rides. There's all sorts of things up there. So just go and take a look and plan out what you're going to try and stake out to be yours come next week. I believe that is everything. You will notice in your bulletins an insert from the affirming task group and a it's not the good kind of pie because you can't eat it but a piece of pie 
There's some questions uh, the attached group is asking us to reflect on. If you have any further questions about any of this information, you can talk to one of the members of the task group. Uh, Karen and Jenny and Naomi are the ones who are here today. So you can ask them questions about, about that and they would be more than happy to answer any questions you've got. I didn't ask them before I said that, but I'm sure they'd be more than happy to answer any questions you've got. Let's join together in our call to worship. May the peace of Christ be with you. We have been called together by the source of life. In the presence of the God who has created and is created. Of Jesus, the Word made flesh, and the Spirit who works in all of us. The candle flame reminds us of the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in our midst. Gathered as spirit-filled disciples of Christ, we quiet our hearts for worship. We pray together. God of peace, of hope, of love, as we listen and pray and reflect this morning. God of peace, of hope, of love, in this week when we pause to remember. God of peace, of hope, of love, as we wait for that day when your rain comes to full flower. We pray in the name of the Prince of Peace, who gives us hope and calls us to love as we share words he once taught his closest friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have three singers today. And our first one is, Give Me Oil in My Lamp. And if you feel moved to stand up and, you know, I, I realize we're United Church people and moving to music that we don't do a lot of, but you're more than welcome to stand up or to dance in your seat and to hum along with Naomi and Nancy and Scott. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the servant king. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, let us sing. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. 
Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising, keep me praising till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the servant king. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, let us sing. Give me peace in my heart, keep me loving. Give me peace in my heart, I pray. Give me peace in my heart, keep me loving. Keep me loving till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the servant king. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, let us sing. Give me love in my heart, keep me loving. Give me love in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah, give me love in my heart, keep me serving. Keep me serving till the break of day. Why don't you sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the servant king. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, let us sing. It's that time of year, the time of year where we rear red poppies on our breast. It will be a different type of Remembrance Day this year because, well, let's face it, it's a different type of everything this year. So I know that Aspen Grove is having a virtual uh, assembly on Tuesday which basically means they'll just pipe the assembly into each classroom using the smart boards. The Royal Canadian Legion has, in almost every branch across the country, said, don't come, which is very unusual for the Royal Canadian Legion, who have spent their entire history saying, come, please come, please, please come, inviting us to watch ceremonies, which in some places will be telecast on local cable, in some places, we'll just watch the National War Memorial Ceremony, which being two hours apart, I usually watched before we went to the ceremony here anyway. But it's that time when we pause and remember those who went and didn't come back and those who went and came back changed. But we also remember, as people of faith, the words never again, which was a keynote of how the Legion marked Remembrance Day when I was growing up. Never again. That's our prayer for remembrance. Never again. Even though we live in a broken world, we pray that a new generation won't need to create their own symbols of remembrance. May God help us as we live into the reign of peace. Amen. As beloved children of God, we come before God in prayer. God, you challenge us to be ready, to wait for the day when all will be well. God, you call us to be ready, to keep the light burning. God of grace, as we try to live out your call to be light to the world. God of grace, when we let the oil run out, when we are not ready, when the flame sputters. The 
God who calls us to be light to the world, refills our flask of oil, relights our blown out flame, forgives our impatience and inattentiveness. God helps us to be ready for the turning and transforming of the world. Amen. Uh, the first reading is from Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 1 to 11 and it talks about being ready for the Lord's coming there is no need to write to you about the times and occasions when these things will happen for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come as a thief comes at night. When people say everything is quiet and safe, then suddenly destruction will hit them. It will come as suddenly as the pains that come upon a woman in labor, and people will not escape. But you, you are not in the darkness, and the day should not take you by surprise like a thief. All of you are people who belong to the light, who belong to the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then we should not be sleeping like others. We should be awake and sober. It is at night when people sleep. It is at night when they get drunk. But we belong to the day and we should be sober. We must wear faith and love as a breastplate and our hope of salvation as a helmet. God did not choose us to suffer his anger, but to possess salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us in order that we might live together with him, whether we are alive or dead, when he comes. And so, encourage one another and help one another, just as you are now doing. And the second reading is from Matthew chapter 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there were ten girls who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any extra oil with them, while the wise ones took containers full of oil for their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so the girls began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten girls woke up and trimmed their lamps. Then the foolish ones said to the wise ones, Let us have some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. No, indeed, the wise ones answered, There is not enough for you and for us. Go to the store and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish girls went off to buy some oil, and while they were gone the bridegroom arrived. The five girls who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was closed. Later the other girls arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried out. Certainly not. I do not know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, Watch out then, because you do not know the day or the hour.
pop quiz for those of you who are guides or scouts. What words go with this? Be prepared. Be prepared. It was something that Baden-Powell chose many, many years ago now as the motto for his scouting group. Be prepared is an essential part of our readings over the next three weeks. Over the next three weeks, we re will read three chunks from Matthew 25, three parables, none of which are easy. I guess parables aren't supposed to be easy anyway. As we build up to the reign of Christ Sunday, as the lectionary year ends, as the liturgical year draws to a close, we build up to that day when we celebrate the coming of the reign of God. And then the next week we run into the first Sunday of Advent when we talk again about the coming of the reign of God in the hopes that maybe this year, maybe this year, And so today's readings talk about being ready, about readiness, preparedness. Our reading from Thessalonians comes from the earliest book to be written in the New Testament. Paul's letter to the church in Thessalon Thessalonica is the earliest document we've got in the books that make up our New Testament, our Christian scriptures. And just a few verses before what we just heard, Paul shares his hope that he thinks the coming is going to be right away. It's very apparent, quite clear to some of us that the earliest church those people who lived in that first generation after Easter expected the kingdom of God was going to be just around the corner. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tonight. There was an expectation that because Jesus had been resurrected, that was the foretaste of the resurrection of all and the coming of the kingdom of God, the coming of the day of the Lord. And yet when I read those verses that Trish just read, I get the sense that they're starting to wonder, why not yet? Thessalonians, it's believed, was written around the year 50. So about 20 years, 15 to 20 years after Easter. And it hasn't happened yet. So I get the sense there are already starting to be questions about, okay, you tell us this is coming, why not yet? And one of the things that Paul and Jesus in our gospel reading tells us is that we don't know when. It will come upon you like a thief in the night. When you're not expecting it. Maybe it will be soon. Maybe it will be late. Be ready. Be ready. Be prepared. It's hard to be ready all the time. Even when we know something's coming, it's hard to be ready all the time. We get tired of waiting. We get tired of living in the in-between. The last eight months have taught us that. That tiredness of living in a... Something's not right. Something needs to change. Okay, we're tired of this now. We're tired of hand sanitizer. We're tired of masks. We're tired of changing our schedules to not do the things we wanted to do. 
It's hard to be ready. It's hard to live and to change. But still, Scripture tells us the change is coming. Be prepared. Frankly, I'm surprised we haven't had more the end of the world is nigh language in the last eight months because every other major crisis in human history has come with the end of the world is nigh. I'm sure there was people saying it during the flu epidemic a century ago. I know there were people saying it during the First World War and during the bubonic plague. The end of the world is nigh, they tell us, because how much longer can we wait? Because the world is so broken, how much longer can we wait? And still we're told to be ready, to be prepared. And because I think Jesus sometimes loses patience with his disciples, sometimes I think Jesus feels they're like those, what we call the foolish bridesmaids in our parable today, who aren't really paying attention, who aren't doing anything to get ready, who leave the oil behind and just have what's in the lamp. And sometimes I think Jesus just gets frustrated with them. And so this song from the Lion King came to mind. I know that your powers of retention are as wet as a warthog's backside. But thick as you are, pay attention. My words are a matter of pride. I see from your vacant expression, the lights are not all on upstairs. But we're talking kings and successions. Even you can't be caught unaware. So prepare for a chance of a lifetime. Be prepared for sensational news. A shiny new era is tiptoeing nearer. So where do we fit? Just listen to teacher. I know it sounds sordid, but you'll be rewarded. And at last I am given my dues. And in justice deliciously square, be prepared. Okay, the rest of the song is more about the fascist regime Scar wants to build up, so we won't go there. Be prepared. Jesus tells us to be prepared. Do not get tired of waiting. Because the new world is coming. The kingdom of heaven shall be like ten maidens who took their lamps. Five were foolish and five were wise. Jesus tells us to be prepared and part of being prepared is to shepherd our resources. To use them carefully. To trim the wick. With an oil lamp if you let the wick get too long, it's sort of like a candle. If you let the wick on a candle get too long, the flame gets really big. You see that sometimes in here at Christmas Eve when we've got lighting each other's candles. And if you're the first person to light your candle and have lit several others, sometimes the wax drops off and the wick gets really long. And the flame gets really big. Well, if that happens with an oil lamp and you let the wick be too long, Sometimes you have to turn the wick up to get, get it to light. And, but it burns the oil faster. You trim the wick. Or in many of the lanterns we see, you just turn the dial and the wick gets shorter. You trim the wick so that it makes best use of the oil. So that when you really need the light, there's still some there. That's part of being ready. Make good use of what you've got. And part of being ready is not getting impatient. Part of being ready is keeping that ear open and listening. Because the kingdom of God will come, Paul tells us, like a thief in the night. Catching you unaware. What does it mean to be ready? What does it mean to hold ourselves in readiness for the coming of something which we dearly want 
or at least we think we dearly want. Next week we're going to read words from Amos who tells us that the day of the Lord may not be so great. What does it mean to be prepared for the changing of the world? I'm not sure we're good at that because quite often, well, we're told something's coming. We're told what it's going to mean. We're told that this is a great big possibility and when it comes, it still comes like a bolt out of the blue. And we're not ready. And we're surprised. And we stand there saying, well, what, ha, wha, ha, wha, wha, ha? or something less intelligible. What does it mean to be ready for the kingdom of God to break into our world, to transform us and the world around us? Injustice, deliciously square. Be prepared. The kingdom is coming. The world will be changed. Love will become touchstone and rule. Justice will reign everywhere. The lamps will burn brightly. Thanks be to God who promises the kingdom, who is growing it among us right now. Thanks be to God who is our oil so that we may burn. Amen. Our next piece is an old spiritual. Keep your lamps trim and burn. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning, keep your lamps trimmed and burning, keep your lamps trimmed and burning, the time is drawing nigh. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning, keep your lamps trimmed and burning, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. The time is drawing nigh. Children, don't grow weary. Children, don't grow weary. Children, don't grow weary. For the time is drawing nigh. Darker midnight lies before us. Darker midnight lies before us. Darker midnight lies before us. The time is drawing nigh. The morning star arising. See the morning star arising. See the morning star arising. The time is drawing nigh. Children, don't go weary. Children, don't go weary. Children, don't go weary. For the time is drawing nigh. Now our night will soon be over, our night will soon be over, yes, our night will soon be over, the time is drawing nigh. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning, keep your lamps trimmed and burning, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. The time is drawing nigh. The time is drawing nigh. The time is drawing
one of the things I always remember when listening to those old spirituals is that many of them were written during the slave era and they were songs of hope to an enslaved people who would soon be free, even if they didn't know when. A Mish Kid of China. The United Church of Canada has a rich history of saints who have gone before us, but whose influence is still being felt. For many in the West End of Toronto, it was one strong, kind woman who showed those who encountered her just what amazing things mission and service can do. Betty Gale, née Thompson, was one of those saints. Betty grew up in China as one of several Mish kids born to missionary parents in North China. She returned in the 1930s after nursing training in Canada at the urging of Dr. Robert McClure. It was there that she met and married Dr. Godfrey Gale. They had their first child, Margie, just before the Japanese invaded China in 1941, which led first to house arrest and then three years of internment in POW camps around North China. Betty kept a journal of the family's time during the war, detailing the poor treatment and horrible conditions of the buildings they lived in. But even during the worst time, Betty was always able to find something funny or hopeful to share. The Second World War took its toll on the missionaries. Years later, Betty and Godfrey gave a, gave a painful account of the illness and death of Eric Little, a Scottish missionary, an athlete in the 1924 Olympics, another Mishkin, who had returned to China to work with his family's mission. His story became famous in the 1981 movie, Chariots of Fire. Now I've got the theme running through my head. The missionaries' passion for making a difference in the lives of people in other parts of the world, as well as at home, has inspired many to follow in their footsteps. Betty and Godfrey's story and passion live on in those they have influenced. Thanks to mission and service, they are part of a great cloud of witnesses that the United Church of Canada of today is built on. We remember them. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of how you live out your faith, thank you so much. If not, I invite you to join me and many others in sharing the gifts we've been given with mission and service, which shares the love of God across the country and around the globe. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. In my quick glance through the newsletter this morning, I saw that there is a piece about being a steward. At least I think I saw the word steward on a page. I'm assuming that's what the piece was about. It was a quick glance. Stewardship, I was told many, many years ago, is about everything we do after we say I believe. It's not just about money in the offering plate. It's about everything we do to share the love of God that we've met in Jesus Christ. So yes, sometimes it's gifts that we put on an offering plate or in the North Reach box in the North X. Sometimes it's holding each other in prayer. Sometimes it's delivering food to a family who you know is going through a rough patch. Sometimes it's just picking up the phone. Sometimes it's singing in church. Sometimes it's thinking, what is my talent? What is my talent? We'll talk more about talents next week. However we share God's love, that's us living out our faith. Thank you to all you do, all you have done, all I hope you'll continue to do, to spread the love of God here in Grand Prairie, and farther and farther afield. Amen.
It's that time when we open ourselves and share our celebrations and our concerns. Um, Judy, is there anything in the book? Thank you. Nothing. There isn't anything written in our book today. But what celebrations and concerns do people have to share in our prayers this morning? People, people of the U.S. or is there living through this election and what will follow? The Jenners, as Jim is recovering from spinal surgery. Let us pray. God of the kingdom. God who promises to break into the world and transform it and transform us. We give thanks for all the ways you are at work within and around and among us. For the signs of hope we see. For the acts of love which we witness, which we receive, and which we share. God, who was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, who first spoke into the primeval chaos and said, let there be light, who watched us grow in our mother's womb, Here's our boarding cry, and is a part of every breath we take. We live, we move, we exist in you. And in that, we trust that you share our despairs and our fears. You are there to support us when our strength fails to comfort us when the world falls apart. And so we pray with all those who struggle today. Those dealing with illness. Those who are afraid, worried, anxious. those who mourn. Those who have given up. May all those who struggle know that they are not alone. That they are held in a love which will never let them go. In the same way, gracious God, who is part of our every breath, we join our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers with those who sing songs of joy and praise and thanksgiving this morning, who stand awestruck at a sunrise. who see the good in the world and just can't help but dance. Who hear your voice in a child's laughter. Who hear your wisdom in the stories of our elders. And we are not alone. Gracious God, we share these prayers, our hopes and our fears, our despairs, our anguish, our celebrations, our joys, our sorrows, our grief. Ones we put into words and ones which live so deep in our souls they have no words. We lay them all in your lap. 
the name of Jesus of Nazareth, our rock and our redeemer, our teacher and guide, who reminds us to be ready because the kingdom is growing, the kingdom is coming, the world will be changed. Amen. Our third hymn today is This Little Light of Mine. I think our singers are doing actions and are inviting you to do the actions with them. Right? I think that's what the instructions they were given were. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I did under a bushel no. I'm gonna let it shine. I did under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. I did under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Don't let anyone get out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let anyone get out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let anyone get out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Take this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Take this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Take this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And people eagerly awaiting the time that God is we go out to tend to our land, keep them burning as signs of hope. As people threaten God's great hope, we carry our full flasks of oil to keep the flame of hope burning. As people who are light and salt to the world, we go to let our light shine, not letting anyone blow it out or cover it up. O God, who first and let there be light. Peace, peace, peace.